The night sky appears peaceful and orderly, but in reality, stars are hurtling through the galaxy at hundreds of thousands of miles per hour. Without static formations, they continually modify their neighborhoods. Fortunately, space is so vast that it's highly unlikely for stars to collide with us. But the bad news is, they don't need to for us to experience trouble. Some stars are already getting uncomfortably close. To understand how dangerous stars can be, we need to discuss gravity. Gravity causes all matter to attract any other matter in the universe. We feel the attraction of an atom a million light years away, and vice versa. Fortunately, this force weakens with distance and also depends on the amount of matter. Thus, what's nearby and has significant mass generates strong attraction and wins the cosmic tug of war. That's why the most massive objects define the behavior of smaller ones around them. The Sun possesses 99.75% of all the mass in the solar system, which is why it's responsible for the behavior and orbit of everything else. Billions of years ago, after the Sun's birth, the solar system was a chaotic and dangerous place where planets formed from small elements constantly colliding. It took eons to achieve stability. Now most planets and asteroids have settled into predictable and safe orbits. We have inner and outer planets, asteroid and Kuiper belts, and at the edge, the Oort cloud, a gigantic sphere of slowly orbiting comets. Frankly, no one wants this equilibrium to be disrupted. If another star came too close, its gravity would pull on everything in the solar system like a spoiled child, disturbing the placid order of planets, asteroids, and comets. This isn't an imaginary danger. About 70,000 years ago, a binary system of a red dwarf and a brown dwarf passed through the Oort cloud and disrupted everything. It may have even directed a deadly asteroid attack our way, although these visitors from the Oort cloud could take a couple of million years to reach the inner solar system. But we have an even bigger problem on the horizon. Gliese 710, a red dwarf with about half the mass of the Sun, is already heading towards our solar system. In approximately one million years, it will cross the Oort cloud and become the brightest star in the night sky. Its reconnaissance flight will be noticeable for hundreds of thousands of years and will significantly disturb the orbits of millions of celestial bodies in the Oort cloud. If we're unlucky, it will trigger a new period of planetary bombardment similar to the early days of the solar system. The night sky could fill with comets and asteroids falling into the inner solar system. The largest ones could cause mass extinctions like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs and even affect stock markets. It could be much worse, though. The galaxy is an intense place where stars frequently come close to one another. That's why it's possible for a star to come much closer and head directly into the inner solar system instead of just passing nearby, which would be extremely bad. Although the chance of another star colliding with the Sun is astronomically improbable, that's not what worries us. If another star passed at a distance from the Sun similar to that of Earth, it could easily eject Earth from the solar system. The probability of something like this happening in the next 5 billion years is 1 in 100,000. Small, but not absurdly remote. It appears there are billions of interstellar planets in the galaxy, and this is one way they're created. So if this happened with an average red dwarf, what would happen to Earth? Ejection from the solar system. As the star enters the solar system, an orange speck will appear in the sky that will grow and brighten over months until it's visible during the day. It will become larger and brighter than the moon, too bright to look at directly. The night sky will fill with an eerie red glow. A few weeks later, it will begin to shrink again, something that will also happen to the sun. In a few years, the sun's size in the sky and its light and heat will begin to diminish worldwide. As day turns to darkness, humanity's final winter will begin. The polar ice caps will grow and expand while plants wither and die. Forests will freeze, and animals will die in mass. When Earth passes Mars' orbit, its average surface temperature will have plummeted to about minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. From space, its blue-green surface turning to the pale grayish white of death, it will start to resemble a frozen moon. As global infrastructures disintegrate, with temperatures continuing to drop, people will take refuge indoors, burning anything possible to keep warm and counting down the time until they run out of food. Those living on the surface will have their days numbered. By the time Earth reaches Jupiter's orbit, the surface temperature will have fallen to minus 238 degrees Fahrenheit, below the coldest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica. Needless to say, by then almost everyone will be dead. Without the sun's energy to evaporate water, clouds won't form and the water cycle will stop. 
The polar ice caps will eventually meet at the equator, and the ocean will be covered by a thick layer of ice. As more heat dissipates, more water will freeze in the ice layer. The salt concentration in the abyssal depths will increase and poison most of the surviving animals. Although near hydrothermal vents, communities of extremophiles might adapt to such circumstances. Far below the surface, some bacteria will hardly notice, as they'll continue to maintain heat, thanks to the radioactive decay of elements in the core. As Earth reaches Pluto's orbit and the Kuiper Belt, the Sun will remain the brightest star in the sky, although just one among many visible during the day. By then, the temperature will barely reach 40 degrees Fahrenheit above absolute zero, causing the gases in the atmosphere to freeze. As the atmosphere turns into nitrogen snow and then oxygen, a strange spectacle will occur that, unfortunately, no one will enjoy. In a few years, it will finish depositing on the planet in a 33-foot frozen layer and barely a thin whisper of gas will remain under this layer, along with the frozen corpses of flora and fauna. As Earth leaves the solar system, it will transform into an interstellar planet, a traveler towards darkness, lifeless and alone. But strangely enough, there's still hope. Humanity won't be caught off guard by this potential extinction event. We'll realize it thousands of years in advance. We can't stop a star, but we can prepare. Many will die, but a few million might survive in enormous artificial complexes powered by geothermal and nuclear energy. Perhaps fusion energy, if we learn to use the surrounding ice as fuel. Humanity could survive for hundreds of thousands of years and eventually get used to the circumstances. New generations wouldn't believe the records about the time when we had our own star and could walk on the surface, and at some point we might consider looking for another home. If Earth were lucky enough to pass near another star with a habitable planet, we could try to start over. Although it seems strange, space travel would be very easy without an atmosphere in the way. That's why it's not so far-fetched to think that the last survivors will leave Earth and try to thrive on a new planet orbiting a new star. Someday, thousands of years later, humanity's descendants will tell legends about Earth's ancient past. Stories about the lost home of a mysterious ice planet floating alone and empty through the darkness of space.